Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power x plus 5 to the power x, and that is equal to 6 to the power x. How nice it can get, right? So we have three consecutive numbers, and we raise them all to the x power, and that is equal to the next number to the x power. So that's a pretty interesting scenario, and actually very rare, I have to tell you. Obviously, if we had like 12 on the right-hand side instead of 6, answer would be fairly easy to find because that would just be 1, right? 3 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 12. That also kind of gives you an idea that x needs to be probably greater than 1 or maybe less than 1. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Anyways, let's get into the problem. So... This problem is a little bit more interesting. We've done similar problems before, but this one is more interesting because we have three different bases on the left-hand side, okay? And they're consecutive integers. And of course, all these bases are consecutive integers, regardless of the symbols. So, let's go ahead and do this. We can't directly solve the problem. There's no analytical way of approaching this problem, but we can definitely guess and check. But we have to be smart. First of all, I have increasing functions on the left and an increasing function on the right. So that doesn't really give me anything. Like if you have two increasing functions, do they intersect at a single point, more than one point? Maybe they don't in even in intersect at all. That's quite possible, right? So you could have uh, two increasing functions like this, you know? So they may not even intersect. But in this case, we have a different scenario. Or they could be like this. One of them increases like this, the other one increases like that. You know, the concavity stuff. And of course, it doesn't happen in this case, but I'm just saying that then you'll have two intersection points. Okay? So, instead of looking at it as is, uh, let's go ahead and do something nice. And most of the time, if you do this with exponential equations, we first identify the largest base, which is 6 in this case, right? And then we divide everything by that, of course, to the power of x, not just 6. Because dividing both sides by 6 would, would be meaningless. It wouldn't really help at all. But if we divide both sides by 6 to the power of x, that would be actually awesome because you would be getting 1 on the right-hand side. Isn't that amazing? Now, let's see what we get from here. We get 3 to the x divided by 6 to the x plus 4 to the x divided by 6 to the x. Oops to the power x and then 5 to the power x divided by 6 to the power x and we have 1 on the right hand side which is nice. Notice that the numerator and the denominator have the same exponent so we can kind of write this as follows 3 over 6 to the power x plus 4 over 6 to the power x plus 5 over 6 to the power x equals 1. As I said earlier if x is 1, you're not going to get a solution because then you would need something else on the right-hand side because x equals 1 gives you 1. First of all, notice that this is 1 half. I'm not sure if it's going to be helpful, but let's just simplify these fractions for now. 2 thirds to the x and 5 6. You see, this is greater than a half. This is 1 half. Their sum is already greater than 1, so there's no way this can be 1 if x equals 1. So what does that mean, though? What happens if you increase the x value? So in other words, if you call this f of x, and if f of 1 is equal to 1 half plus 2 thirds plus 5 over 6, which is greater than 1, right? What's that supposed to mean? Does that mean the x value we're looking for is greater than 1 or less than 1? That's a good question, right? So we, in order to be able to find out, uh, we kind of need to look at the resulting function. What type of function are we dealing with? Well, f of x is a sum of decreasing functions, right? Because they're all bases that are less than 1. So yes, f of x is decreasing all the time, all the time. So you have a decreasing function intersected by horizontal line. Guess what? You will have a unique solution. That's what we're trying to find. But again, do you think x is going to be greater than 1? Let's take a look. For First of all, let's find out what happens at f equals 1, x equals 1. Let's find out uh, 3, 2, 3 plus 4 is 7, 12 over 6. Uh-oh, we got a 2 from here. Pretty, pretty interesting. I wasn't expecting that. So that means if you're trying to get 1 from this sum, 
then your x values should be larger or smaller. What do you think? Since we have a decreasing function, as we increase the x value, the y values will decrease, meaning that f of 1, and let's say our solution is a, and f of a, suppose f of a is 1, and in this case, uh, f of 1 happens to be greater than f of a, but since f is decreasing, it'll be reversed, which means 1 must be old. 1 must be less than a. In other words, this means a is greater than 1. So the exponent you're looking for must be greater than 1. That's a good thing to know because we can use that information to plug in some values. For example, can x be 2? What do you think? Well, if you know the Pythagorean theorem a little bit, you're probably going to realize, uh-oh, this probably doesn't work. But let's test it out with the original equation because that's easier. We don't want to deal with fractions, do we? Who wants to deal with fractions? I don't think anybody. So if x equals 2, obviously x equals 1 did not work. x equals 2, we know that x is greater than 1. That's why we pick x equals 2. And that gives us 3 to the third. I mean, 3 to the second, sorry, 4 to the second and 5 to the second. You probably know that this is 25. Another 25 will give you 50. So does 50 equal 36? No, I don't think so. Okay, so that means x equals 2 is not a solution. But guess what? At x equals 1, we get 12. At x equals 2, we get 36 or 50. So we're getting closer. Do, so do you think the x equals 3 is going to work? You can give it a try, right? If x is equal to 3, then you're going to get 3 to the third, 4 to the third, and 5 to the third. Let's go find out what it is. This is 27. This is 64. This is 125. This is 91. 91 plus 125 is 216 which happens to be 6 to the third power. Yay, Houston, we have a solution. Awesome. And what is that? It is x equals 3. Why? Because we have this beautiful, beautiful identity, which you could also solve for like x cubed plus x plus 1 cubed plus x plus 2 cubed equals x plus 3 cubed. If you set it up as a cubic equation, you could probably even get away with picking this as x and this one as x minus 1 and x plus 1 so that a lot of terms cancel out. That's probably going to be a better idea. But at the end, you should find x equals 3, which means 6 is a solution. I mean, what am I talking about? Which means x equals 3 is a solution. Make sense? Of course, by the way, uh, I shouldn't be using the x values here because um, x is for something else. Okay, never mind. I confuse myself and probably you too. But this shows that the only solution is x equals 3. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions and see where they intersect. Ta-da! Yes, thanks to Wolfram Alpha, we know that these two graphs will intersect at x equals 3 and only, only at x equals 3. Notice that they're both increasing, but they cross each other once and then they part their ways because of the way they grow. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.